Well, San Francisco has always been notorious for the highest rent prices in the country, but now it's actually lagging a bit behind New York. The Big Apple edged out San Francisco as the most expensive rental market in the country back in August and then considerably widened its lead in September. According to Zumper's latest national monthly rent report, the median price of a one bedroom apartment in San Francisco stayed flat from August to September at about $2,800. In New York, the price went up to 2,950. To explain why we're uh, why all of this happened, we're joined by Jeff Andrews. He's the author of the Zumper Report. Uh, Jeff, thanks for joining me here. Obviously, no one here complaining about staying stagnant in San Francisco when it comes to rent, but uh, we all are wondering a little bit uh, why this is happening. Yeah, um, that's a good question. I think <laughs> what's happening in San Francisco is uh, the city's kind of in a holding pattern. Uh, tech companies have been more likely to adopt permanent work from home policies. After the pandemic, a lot of people left the city. The same thing happened in New York, but people have actually come back to New York despite the fact that mm -hmm. offices aren't really open in New York either. If you look at office occupancy rate, New York is negligibly ahead of San Francisco in that regard. So it's not necessarily the office reopenings that are bringing people back to New York, but um, everybody makes their own individual decision about where they want to live. And uh, in San Francisco, the people who left after the pandemic just haven't started coming back yet. And in New York, they have. Interesting. OK, well, uh, this is the first time since 2014, according to your report, that New York rent has passed San Francisco. Do you see this continuing? I think at the moment, San Francisco is very much in a holding pattern. I think this is the third month in a row where rent has basically been flat or maybe up a little bit or down a little bit. Um, I think the thing to watch is in 2022, when these tech companies start reopening their offices in San Francisco again, that's going to bring some people back to the city. The question is just how many. <clears throat> um, but I think when we look back at the pandemic, this could be an event that we view as having permanently lowered rent in San Francisco relative to some of the other big cities in the country. Do you think eviction moratoriums have anything to do with this at all as well? Um, a little bit, but the, the eviction moratoria, to the extent that they are holding people in their homes, mm -hmm. um, it's not broad enough and it's not concentrated enough in any one place to really move the needle on a macro scale. So uh, obviously the moratoria have been in place longer in New York and San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the difference between those two cities. In other parts of the country, obviously the local moratorium expired a long time ago. Right. And I don't and it's up in the air as to how much that was even impacting things in those places in the middle of the country where they have now expired. Right, right. Um, uh, when looking at those numbers, uh, San Francisco is still about $400 higher than the next highest city, which is Boston, uh, which sits at uh, 2400 Do you see San Francisco at all lowering closer to Boston in any anytime soon? I don't think San Francisco rent is going to drop anymore. Um, I think the question is just as it relates to Boston is how much does Boston regain before San Francisco starts to regain? Um, I mean, another thing to consider with regard to San Francisco and some of the East Coast cities, um, San Francisco was so much more expensive than all the other cities prior to the pandemic. So in New York City, when rent started to drop, I think people looked at some of the deals that were on the market and they were like, wow, that's a really good deal. So yeah. they came back to the city. In San Francisco, rent, relative to pre-pandemic is still down 20%, and it's still one of the most expensive markets in the country. So I think on the right. East Coast, there was a price incentive to come back that really just isn't there in San Francisco just because it was so much more expensive than everywhere else prior to the pandemic. Gotcha. Uh, talk to me just a little bit about uh, the other cities here in the Bay Area, because Oakland's the other one that's uh, sitting on that top 10 list. What are we seeing in terms of those prices? Yeah, all the, the three big cities in the Bay Area, San Francisco, San Jose, and Oakland, they're all linked. They're moving more or less in concert with each other. San Francisco did take a bigger hit than the other two, uh, but at the same time, it's it's uh, 
over the course of 2021, it has risen more than San Jose and Oakland. So um, at the moment, Oakland did not take as much of a hit at the time of the pandemic, and it's uh, rising a little bit slower. But for the most part, these three cities are going to move in concert with each other. The big question is now when offices start to reopen, how many people come back to the city? And I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Jeff Andrews with Zumper, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.